Hey developers, today we're going to look at using AWS's Amplify. So this is Amazon Web Services CLI tool that we can use to do all sorts of fun stuff with our Vue projects and React projects. We can deploy, we can add authentication, we can do a lot of stuff. So today we're going to look at how you can deploy using AWS Amplify on our Vue project. And if you guys aren't familiar with Vue and you're familiar with React, or Angular, this is very similar setup for every one of these front end projects. So I just wanna go over this with you and show you how to do it. And if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a software developer. I have several years of software development experience, and I'm also the creator of the Vue.js in action book, which you can find in the links below. But before we get too far, let's have a quick word from our sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Progress. Now, if you don't know who Progress is, they're behind Kendo UI, they created NativeScript, they do a lot of stuff in the mobile development landscape and they created this ebook. It's 100% free. In the description below, make sure you click on the link. You can put your email address in and get this ebook and it has everything about the mobile development landscape. It's actually a pretty interesting read. It talks about mobile development in the early days and what it's like to create mobile apps today. So make sure you click on that link in the description and you can download this free ebook and let's begin. All right, so let's begin here. So uh, first, before we get started, this is gonna be just a quick tutorial. I'm not gonna walk through every single page. Um, this is not gonna be a code along. This is gonna be just how you can get an existing website up and running on AWS Amplify. We're actually gonna put it in uh, S3 bucket, which is AWS's way we can uh, host static websites. So one of the ways you can host static websites. And I'm going to assume that you have an AWS account. If you don't, you can always sign one up for one. I believe you can get like almost a, like a free year of service if you're like a brand new user and you sign up. Um, otherwise, this is actually really, really cheap to, to host a website in, on an S3 bucket. Um, you, It's super duper cheap. I don't have the exact amounts here, but you can pretty much play around for almost free. So I would highly recommend just go to the AWS Amazon site and sign up for it, create a, f create a free account, and then you'll have access to all the different AWS services. I mean, there is a ton of them. Obviously you can see here EC2, LightSail, S3. And one thing nice about Amazon Web Services is that there is so many of them and it's actually this library, this Amplify library makes it a lot easier to do things that in the past, you may have had to move on to your DevOps guy, but now you can maybe just do it do it yourself. I mean, obviously they're still working on this plugin. They're still making changes and updates to it. This is all command line. So if you don't like command line, this may not be the right tool for you, but it's making it easier and easier. So that way you don't have to worry about, you know, how do I create an S3 bucket? How do I copy files over to it? How do I set up the security? I mean, this tool does a lot of stuff for you and it's making things a lot easier. So let's begin here. I have created a website uh, here. It's using Vue CLI 3. Um, I, have, I'm, I have my Visual Studio Code open right here and I have the terminal open. So we're gonna open up Vue UI, which is, if you don't know, that's the Vue CLI 3 way of creating uh, projects. And you can see here, um, I have this view serve. I'm just gonna go ahead and run it. So it's gonna go ahead and start the server for me. Might be a little bit easier than, than using the command line. So here it is. You see, this is the basic default server that you get, a uh, website which you get when you install a brand new site with Vue CLI 3. Um, if you don't know about how to install a site with Vue CLI 3, uh, I did a few videos before um, earlier on how to do that. So just check through some of my videos and you'll see how to do that. Uh, we can see right here, this is the hell world. Like if I go ahead and, I don't know, for Eric, save it. So you can see here for Eric guide recipes, customize the project. So yeah, obviously it's working. Um, guide two, save it. You see here, it's now it's refreshing right away. So working, working great. Obviously this is not gonna win any design awards. This isn't anything really special here, but this is just a default website. And let's see if we wanna deploy this into an S3 bucket and just deploy it and get it up and running really quickly. So I can go here in the terminal. I'm gonna create, I have the view UI running right now. So I'm gonna hit the plus here and it's gonna create another terminal. And first thing what I need to do is I need to install Amplify, which is this the tool. So I'm gonna do NPM or you can do this with yarn too. Tac G, I'm gonna do AWS Amplify CLI. 
And this will just take a moment and it'll go ahead and install the AWS Amplify. Okay, I went ahead and installed the AWS Amplify CLI. So that way I can use it in the command line here. So let's go ahead and set it up. And by the way, if you look at the AWS documentation, there's a whole section on view. So we'll go ahead and install this right now. We may not actually use it, but it's good to know that it's here. And actually in a future video, we might go ahead and, and try this out. So let's go ahead and just install AWS Amplify, which is it'll be dependency inside our view project. Okay, and we'll, go, we'll also install the AWS Amplify view, which is specifically for view. So if you, uh, this AWS Amplify, you usually install this on, you know, React, Angular, anything you're using, but this is specifically for library for view too. All right, so we got both of those installed. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and now configure Amplify. So to do that, I'm gonna do Amplify configure here. And that's gonna go ahead and open up the AWS console, which I'll see right here. And it'll, if you're not already logged in, it'll force you to log in. And then you go back to the prompt here. I'll just hit enter. I'll ask you what region. Let's do US West. Let's do US East one. And it'll ask me for a username. I'm just gonna leave the default, hit enter. And then it's gonna actually open up the page here. And it's gonna make you walk you through, uh, walk you through the user creation. So I'm going to go ahead and just click next at the bottom. And I'm just gonna leave the defaults next and continue. So it gives an administrator access and then it creates this access key and, and secret access key. So if we hit enter here, it asks you for the access key, which I'll go ahead and add in. And then it's asking for the secret key, which I'll go ahead and do. I'll copy it. And profile name, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just leave the default and successfully set up new user. So cool, so now it has the access it needs to do everything we need. And so after we do that, we're going to need to set up our account here. So we, we set up our account, but now we have access to doing a lot of different commands and each one of these commands will create the will create what we need and use this user that we just created. So first thing I wanna do is amplify init. And what this is gonna do is gonna ask me a few questions about my project. So it's asking me what text editor I'm using. I'm gonna put in Visual Studio Code. And it's gonna ask you what type of app you're building. I'm gonna do JavaScript and ask you what JavaScript framework you're using. I'm gonna choose view. You can see here I could choose Angular, React, whatever I want. Source path directory, which is just source. That's where all everything is. Distribution pack directory, that's when you build it, which uh, I believe is, is uh, dist. And the build command, so if we look here at our package dot, our package JSON file, we can kind of look at our scripts. So uh, npm run script build is our build command. So our serve command is serve. So that's right. And do you want to use an AWS profile? I'm gonna hit yes. And we're just gonna use the default one that we created already. And so it's gonna go ahead and initiate the project and it's going ahead and create all the roles and the default default resources and buckets that we need for this. I believe this is just not actually creating any buckets, it's just creating the right permissions to do what it needs to do. It's not actually creating uh, anything right now. Cool, so Amplify status will show you what you've added already. If it's a little configure deployed, you can now, I can add stuff, I can push and publish. Try Amplify add API to create a backend API. So there's a lot of really cool stuff I can do now and it's kind of all built in. It actually, if you look over here, now we have this Amplify RC file and this has all the information for our account, um, our different roles, our region that we set up, where the different buckets are, things like that. And it actually creates a whole Amplify folder for you, which later on, if we were doing some more advanced things, we can change some of this. So like if I accidentally got the directory is wrong, I can change it here or the scripts, things like that. But those look fine. So let's see if we can uh, go ahead and add um, add hosting and see if we can push this site up to S3. So we can do MPM or we can do amplify, add hosting. 
And once again, it's gonna ask us a few questions. So if we wanted to do prod S3, I heard this takes about five, six minutes. So we can set up CloudFront. We can also set up uh, Route 53, which is like a way we can have our own URLs, our own domain name. So if we created my eric.com domain name, I can use Route 53 and then have it point to this S3 bucket, which would be really cool where we're gonna host the website. But for now, for now we're not gonna use CloudFront. We don't have to worry about caching or anything. So we're gonna do S3 only with HTTP. It's gonna ask the bucket name. So I'm just gonna leave it the default. Index.html, that's fine. Index.html. Cool, so now we should be able to publish it. So I'm gonna try this. Do amplify publish. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna go ahead and it tells you what we have here. Category hosting, resource name, S3 and CloudFront cache, create. Make sure you want to continue, yes. And now it's updating resource in the cloud. And so it's actually gonna build our site and then push it up to the S3 bucket and we won't have to do anything special. It's kind of doing everything for us. And you can see here, I didn't have to go into the AWS and create anything or, or create the S3 bucket or change any configurations. It's kind of doing everything for me. It's, it's defaulting a lot of values that, uh, that we should uh, have here. So this will take a minute. All right, cool. So what it did here is it actually built it built it in production mode. You can kind of scroll up and see how it did it. It created all these vendor chunks and our app files that we expect. Uh, you'd see here it ran the view CLI service build command. It has the, the hosting bucket in there. Uh, and it went ahead and just uploaded everything to here, which you can see here, here here's the S3 bucket on US East one. Uh, it's working. So this is really cool. Obviously, I didn't create any routes or anything, but it should work fine even if I had different routes. It's all configured correctly, and that just took just a few minutes of configuration. And what's really neat is, like I said, if I had Route 53, I can go ahead and add some routing to this. And one thing I want to show you guys, maybe in the next video, if you guys think this is neat, is there, if you look in the AWS Management Console, there is an API gateway. And I don't know if you guys have been used API gateways with other services, but we can really easy with, with Amplify create an API gateway. And basically, um, or what we could do is basically create a Cognito account real easily using Amplify. Also create an API gateway. We can have, we can have uh, a Lambda function for a, a quick backend that we wanna get up and running really quickly. Um, there's a lot of cool things we can do really easily with Amplify. Um, so we could essentially create a Cognito, which is like a, a user authentication in the cloud. So we can use that for authentication. Then we can have an API gateway, which would only allow certain traffic to go through as long as it was a uh, user was authenticated with Cognito. Then we can have that pushed into a Lambda. I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff we can do here. So I want to know... What you, what you guys think? I think Net, uh, Netlify has uh, a similar uh, way. Heroku has similar ways of deployment. It's really simple. I, but I think what's difference is here is there's a lot of there's a lot of services that you can use with Amplify. Like you see, you have Authenticator. Um, there's a lot of cool things you can do with it that that uh, some of these other services don't have. And I kind of want to jump into this and do a couple more videos on this. So let me know what you guys think. This was super simple to get up and running. Leave a comment below what you guys think. Let me know. And uh, if you guys are interested in these type of videos, make sure you click that subscribe button and that little bell button, and you'll be notified next time I create a video. Thanks.